into everyone. Good evening. Let us go ahead and open up our uh, Wednesday Bible study. We'll sing hymn number 190. We'll sing first hymn number 190, and then we will have a word of prayer. Hymn number 190. Maybe my everlasting hope. Say amen. 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 Let us together say. What a fellowship! What a joy! That we are royal priesthood, that we're special people. 
And, and the word uh, church, uh, the word church comes from the, the our English word uh, from, from, from it comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which means the, the, the call out. And we've been called out, we've been saved uh, for a purpose. And, and we've got a purpose here as, 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 as Christians. And uh, so we'll talk about uh, things tonight that, that, make, that makes us a uh, really, really uh, good influence. Uh, last week, uh, we, we talked about a couple of points. And now we're on uh, the first page on, on the right-hand side uh, uh, that says the fact that a Christian life will give evidence that, 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 that the, those, those holy virtues known as the fruit of the Spirit, and they should dwell in his heart. Galatians uh, 5.22. Uh, can someone find Galatians uh, uh, 5.22 for us? Okay. Uh, I was on the first front page. Uh, what, what, the, the Christian church in his Galatians uh, 5. Right, Galatians uh, 5. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gal Galatians, uh, Galatians uh, 6. Uh, yes, try Galatians 5, 22 and 23. For the fruit of the Spirit is God, God, Okay, okay. Those are the kind of virtues uh, that, that, that should be manifested in us. And, and what's, what was the first one again? Love. Love, love, okay. Imagine a Christian uh, that's born of love. A Christian that doesn't show any love. A child of God that, that's born of, of love. Now, what's the second one? Joy. 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 How important is, is joy? What's the difference between joy and just being happy? Is this is Okay. Actually, this is based on circumstances. Right. Joy is eternal. Joy, joy is in Christ. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's so it cannot be taken away. The only thing, of course, that can separate you from joy of Christ is this sin. Jesus, he, he, he's there. 
He, he's faithful. He's, he's there for you. So, so put your trust in him. Not, not in things, not in circumstances, not in uh, uh, who runs the government, whether we have a Republican or a uh, Democratic president, the independent, it don't matter to me. I still got my joy. But, but if everything is, is dependent upon what happens around you, you know, you're all up, up, up and down. And that's not a way that a child of God ought, ought, ought to be making such a trust in Jesus. In that book that Andrew gave us about the sermon, mm -hmm. had a good thing I read like that, an acronym of joy. Jesus mm -hmm. first, all others second, and why yourself but last. Mm -hmm. So if you keep Jesus first and others second, yourself last, things go good. If you get them out of order, you're going to be in trouble, especially when you take it. Jesus out of Paul Carpenter. Here in a couple of little Amen. 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 Thank you. Hello, my daughters. Again, I'm afraid about joy for about a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. um, actually, about five years ago, I decided to stay home with our children. And I said, I'm not having joy in this. Because mm -hmm. they're dirty diapers. And, and I realized it was temporary. And it made me realize that joy is that place you find yourself when your spirit is in focus on your okay. purpose. And once you are clear about that divine purpose and your spirit is focused on the divine purpose, you're always in that place of joy. Okay. Regardless of what circumstances or temporary things are happening around you, your spirit is in Does that make sense? It makes sense. 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 Yeah. yeah. Devoted to prayer. All right. All right. 
And then uh, First Thessalonians uh, five seventeen. If someone has that, praise God. Okay, okay. Now, now, we should have have, have a very active uh, prayer life. We should have a very very active prayer life. I was impressed uh, by uh, a friend of mine. He was this older uh, uh, gentleman, and uh, he wasn't uh, in any church of Christ, but he was one of the labels, and he was an old old minister. He had a bit of all hands in. Every now and then I would, I would take him somewhere, we, we might be out to, to McDonald's, and if he saw somebody in there, they might be limping, or, or they, they uh, you know, it, it would be apparent that they have something physical wrong. And that man would always stop that person, hold that person's hand, and, and, and pray for him. And, and that impressed me, it, 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 you know, we would always do that, you know. And, and, and from that, I noticed that, I said, you know, that's the right thing. Because oftentimes we run into people and they ask you to pray for them, you know. And sometimes you might forget. And when people come to you and ask you to pray for them, there's nothing wrong with, with, with going over in the corner or, or get in a place and hold their hand and pray for them. And I was always impressed with that, the fact that he would stop and, and pray for people uh, along the way. And I try to make it a practice of doing that. You know, people say pray for me. I said, we don't have to, to wait. You, you can pray for them right, right then and there. You know, and I think we should do more of that. Because sometimes people wait until they get to church and they, they make a request for somebody else. But you, you can pray for hope, you know. We all should have an active prayer life. You know, uh, I think in, in 1 Peter 2, 9, where it says we are a chosen generation, we are royal priesthood. Now, now, what was the purpose of the priests in, in the Old Testament? What, what, did the priests, what did the priests do? They were advocates. Okay. They were people who the priests. Right. They were, they were, they were intermediaries between them and God. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're a royal priest, and we bring people to Christ, you know? We, 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 we bring people, we pray with people, we lead people to Christ. So he referred to us as being a royal priest. So, so we need to stop, we need to minister uh, to people, you know, their, their spiritual needs and other things. So, so you know, let, let us uh, uh, not forget how important prayer is. And priests, by the biblical law, they were separated from a lot of things, you know, they live a good life. Yeah. So that's what God commands us to him. And he says, we do, God, here's our prayers. Amen. That's right. Amen. And we're special people. We're peculiar people. So, so you know, we, 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 we can do more. Active prayer life uh, really, really needs something. You know? And, and, and God does, does answer prayers. And we had some, some testimonies on, on, on last Tuesday where some folk, you know, said some things about what God had done. I mean, God's always doing uh, good and wonderful things for me, and he's doing a lot of things in a lot of people's life, a lot of things we just take for, for granted, you know? But uh, he, he's doing a lot. You know, if you woke up this, this morning, you know? He, he's, he's done a lot for us. And, and we are we are say we ought to live like, like we believe it. We ought to live like, like, like we believe it. Uh, Andrew here is picking up what he has some guys and guys. Well, that's a really good material. Mm -hmm. That book on prayer, I don't know if you have to read it all, but that was a very outstanding book. Mm -hmm. it really got me to think about prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to just keep my prayer life alive. Like, you know, I didn't want to buy it with God. You know, one of the important things is that, mm -hmm. you know, that I've seen that, you know, God wasn't worried about giving me presents. He was worried about me being in his presence. And so I got too hung up on, on asking him things in presence people stuff like that when I need to see his presence. Mm -hmm. And so that, that really uh, turned my thinking in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now now uh first Peter three seventeen uh you know this this is uh so so important. First Peter uh first Peter three seventeen says Part is better if we, if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Okay, this is not the one we were looking at. Okay, it is the one we were looking at. It talks about the husbands, uh, the way we are to act, so that our prayers uh, won't, won't be hindered. We're going to have to pray. We're going to have to pray. First Peter 3.12. Okay, that's a good one too. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who, who do evil. The first seven, I think. Is verse seven one of the Yes, verse seven. 
Uh, First Peter three seven. Do you read that, Brother Andrew? Likewise, husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as a weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Amen. 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 See that, that that's that's very important. That that's very important. Uh, uh, I would want to be praying, and, 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 and my prayers were being hindered because of the way I treat my wife, or because of the way I treat my my, my family. You know, when I when I pray to the Lord, I I, I, I don't want to be hindered. You know, I I, I want to be uh, I want to live on, on the right side of God, not on the left side. So so even that would cause our prayers to be hindered. The way that we treat our wives. That's, that's, that's very important. Your prayer life is, is very important. And that's a spiritual blessing that we have. Uh, prayer, the fact that we, we, can, we can pray to God, you know? And, and every, uh, look at Jesus before he went to, 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 uh, to the cross. What about in the Garden of, of Gethsemane, you know? He, he prayed. And, and he would always be praying to his father before he, you know, and, and, and then also, uh, in, 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 in the Bible, all the great men of God, all the great men and women of faith, before they made any decision, they, they prayed to God and they asked God, what, what should they do? When, when the children of God in, in Old Testament time, before they would go into battle, they, they, would, they would consult God and they, and they would pray and ask God, what, what should they do? Remember Saul? Saul got in trouble because he wouldn't wait on the prophet, you know. Because the prophet was supposed to go to God before he went in battle, and Saul decided he, 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 would, he would do it instead of uh, wait and, 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 and have to be done properly. But every decision you make, you need to pray and ask the Lord to, to give you guidance. You know, I'm getting ready to, I got to get a new air conditioning unit in my house, and I'm praying to ask the Lord to give me wisdom and knowledge so I can get it, you know, get it, because I made some mistakes on things, you know. And it have, doesn't have to be a costly investment, but whatever you do, you need to ask the Lord to give you some guidance and wisdom before, before you step out there. But oftentimes we, we do things, we make decisions, we move, and then after we, we mess up, we want God to fix it. We want God to in our prayer and say, Lord, please uh, fix this. And it would have been much better had you gone to God at first and, and had some patience and before you, you know, make, make those decisions. Why, why do you think sometimes we don't ask God to, 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 to answer our prayers? What, what if you're dating somebody, you know, and, and you like them, and, 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 you, and you know deep down inside that, that, that that's probably not, not the one for you based on, on scripture and so forth, and, and you do it anyway. I know some of the worst situations I've gotten into, the scripture, you know, clearly says, you know, uh, and that's really not, not the thing to do. I've co-signed for people on, on, on notes and stuff like that, and, and, and I've been stuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't ever sign for anybody to get a house or a car, because those are long-term things. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the Bible tells you about co-signing for, for people and, and things like that, you know? And, and it tells you about uh, when you go into a business, don't, don't, don't. Be uh, uh, unevenly yoked. You know, if you're going into business, why do you want to go into business with, with a heathen? You know, somebody's your, your values the same. You know, you're really different all together. But yet, you, you, you move anyway. You know better. Your spirit tells you not to do it. But yet, you just go right ahead on. You know, sometimes we, we don't want God to, to, to direct us. So we just do what we want to do. And then all of a sudden, our prayer is going to be, Lord, please fix this. But, but go, go to him in prayer before you make, you make your decisions. And, and, and give it time. Give it time. Usually when we rush into things, that's when we usually make, make some mistakes. But, but have patience and, and, and wait on the Lord. So, so what was the answer to the question? Why do you need to do that? Why do you because, because a lot of times we, we, we don't want, we want to do what we want to do. And it might not be in the will of God. And so we, we go ahead on and, and, and do it. I remember when I was growing up, I, I used to, I don't know where I got this from, but I used to say it's easy to get forgiveness sometimes than it is to get permission. You know, a lot of times I would do things and then uh, a business decision, I mean, you know, since I've been married, I might want to buy a car and brother and me and my wife really, really talk about it, I just go ahead on and do it. And then I said, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, maybe I should have asked. You know, I knew what she was saying, so I didn't want to get it. I knew she would forgive me. So sometimes the easier we think to get forgiven than it is to get permission. That, that's probably what we do. Like, yes, yes. So I was going to say, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's simply said that if we walk after the Spirit, mm -hmm. we do not fulfill the desires of the flesh. 
like Paul talked about, that mm -hmm. we have this a flesh mm -hmm. and the spirit is operating. Right. And whichever one that we give the attention to, mm -hmm. is what's going to rule. It's all that we feel like we're a spirit to rule. Mm -hmm. It's not a role in this space, mm -hmm. but it will be as critical as if we're walking out the flesh. Because as you read earlier, mm -hmm. but the, the acts of the flesh are which are, these are things that we're just doing possibly. You know, you have the store and the market is over here. So I have to put it in front. Right. And you're going to the store without with the intention of purchasing, purchasing something. But because it's just there, an impulse is terrible because you need that. Mm -hmm. you know, and so that in that instance, you're, you're operating in the flesh and not in the spirit. Not in the spirit. And so I think if you're walking after the spirit, then it, it lessens your, your uh, you have to with your choices. That's a good analogy. That's a very good analogy. Thank you. Now, Dennis? There's a lot of people trying to stop sin with willpower, but it doesn't work because Paul says a lot, we're going to be buried with Christ and baptism, but no man to death. And people that say, like, the sinner's prayer and they make the saved and stuff like that, and they have something they can't overcome sin because they haven't been set free from the law of sin and death, but they haven't been buried with Christ and baptism. And it's very, very important because that's where you die. That's the old man's put to death. And, and Paul did a whole chapter 6 about that. You know, because you know, sometimes then a member of Lord should say baptism for remission of sin, which it is. And it's in baptism where we see the forgiveness of sin, but that's where by faith that's where the old man's put to death, killed. And by faith because Christ raised will also raise in the newness of life. And that's where it happens. And that's the only way you can crucify your flesh is by faith in Christ. By being baptized by it. having a good conscience free from uh, uh, serving God in the spirit. You have a good conscience when you do that, when you obey God, when you're baptized. You have a good conscience and you're going to serve the Lord because of the resurrected from the grave. And that's why it's really important that we talk. Because people are having problems can never overcome the sin of the flesh and then they're going to put it down. And that's just, and you just can't do it now because people are tired of all the time. They never get free from their sense of mind when you get stuff. You know, our, our college obviously is Christian influence and um, mm -hmm. you know, you can be brought up about being a man for you, which you know, definitely applies to business and how they make marriage too. And, you know, we have an example from Paul where personally they said that now he says a wife's got her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she's free to marry her, she wishes only for the Lord. Mm -hmm. In that example of marriage, a Christian should never marry a non Christian. Not that she raise her children that way. You are not. You are a Christian. You should not give yourself to something wrong. It's not. It's not a Christian. And because think about the point in my life. You know, I mean, I should, thankfully, you know, my wife's dad did become a Christian about 50 years later after marriage. But, so, but all those 50 years between my mother-in-law and my father-in-law not being a Christian dad affected their family so bad. Over all those years, you know, faithfully today, he said he doesn't work, but that's not always the case. You know, I saw the same thing with my grandmother and my grandfather, um, same, same thing happened. And um, so, at the same thing, you have to make sure what you just said about, you know, you need to give to, especially marriage, Christian points, because you can't let our children, our grandchildren, you know, we have to emphasize what we call marriage is not to be a Christian point. Look in the Old Testament, all the examples when God told not to marry what out of out of the out of the Jewish race and weren't supposed to marry these foreign people because they served other gods and did other things that would lead them away from God. That's what happens. A lot of times, you know, especially women, I think they fall in that, not putting on women. But they get married to a guy and they think they can change it. That's how it's gonna happen. So no, I mean, I wouldn't my wife is I know, but I mean
Well, but, but with God, all things are possible. You know, yeah. in the scripture it talks about how the wife, uh, uh, she can get her character and her chaste behavior. But, but that's not the thing to do. But if you're into that, you know, then, then you, 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 you have that faith and you live that life in front of him and you pray and, and hope that by the grace of God, he will become a Christian. But, uh, but that, there's no guarantee. That, that's not the ideal situation and, and, and that's not, not the thing that he would have us to do. But, but, but the Lord, uh, uh, but there, there are a lot of cases where it happened, but I wouldn't advise, I wouldn't want my daughter to marry a non-Christian. I think it's like the scripture saying about influence, all about obedience. Because mm -hmm. you have influence when you're a big guy. When you're a disobedient, you don't have good influence. You have vast and negative influence. Mm -hmm. So it's about being obedient. And when God gives us scripture, that's like time when we become a Christian. We think we're set free from the law. But God says what? Keep uh, keep my commandments. If you let me keep my commandments. It's just that we're free. We're not saved by the law. We're saved by grace. But we still have to obey and keep God's commandments once we become a Christian. And, and I think sometimes that we don't understand we have to have influence. By being, a, by being obedient, we have good influence. Mm -hmm. When we're disobedient, we have a bad influence. The more obedient we are to God and obeying His commandments, the better, the better the influence that we'll have. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Yeah, I disagree. Um, the mistake is made by, you know, man, you know, being more, you know, but to me, I think that equal in a sense, but at the same time, a woman, in a sense, when it comes down to spiritual, I think it's more strong in a sense than a man. But at this idea, I'm not going to make the statement that he made to God's will about the man more. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't so. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at that thing with God's will. If you teach a person to God's man over and they see the truth, God's will look at the teacher. So be, don't, you know, don't, you can't just sit here and condemn one. Verse of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we, we can hold, you know what I'm saying, with God's we come down and give our soul to Christ. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, you know, because I might be more because I'm a man, but that, that's nonsense. Yeah, some, sometimes it, it, it will, you know, some, some personalities are stronger than others, you know that. Some, 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 some you know, we, we can't make a, a statement uh, like, like, like that. I didn't, I didn't mean to make a statement like that. I said that was a generalization that sometimes women do that, make that mistake to do that. I'm not saying that's wrong. Um, every woman's like that. Right. I'm just saying they tend to do things like that and get in trouble. Okay, mm -hmm. let's move on. Let's see if you have something to say about the woman. Oh, I was thinking about the woman. Then we have to fall back to school and, you know, and boys because they are different, uh, you know. Right. Race from the Moabites and was was Jewish, yes. Also, and came Jesse, David, and early father of the Jews. So sometimes God has reasons for allowing certain things to happen. They have, yeah. they have exceptions to the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, my 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 family, we we didn't know anything about the Church of Christ until. I, you know, became a, a you know, a believer, maybe, maybe, you know, but, but, but I wouldn't recommend nobody marrying an unbeliever, you know, but I would not recommend, well, I have to say what scriptures, you know, that, that, but uh, if you're taking a chance when you do it, and, and, and you should, you, you pray and ask somebody, that's got to be with God, a person, a Christian person, you know, but we know that with God, all things are possible, ain't nothing too hard for God, but man, you know, but, but with God, all, all things are possible. God, all things are possible. And then the next thing, the Christian must be faithful in attendance. Hebrew 10, uh, uh, 25. And we know that's the scripture that talks about do not uh, forsake the, the assembly, you know. Right. And it doesn't matter if some do. And then James uh, uh, 4, 17 talks about when you know that you do it and you do it not uh, to him, that's a, that's a sin. So, so we know that, that if you're going to be uh, if you're going to have some influence in, in the church and all other folks, you need you need to be in attendance. You don't need to be the I would call them uh, uh, the, uh, the sister hardly ever come, brother and sister hardly ever, brother and sister hit and miss, <laughs> brother and sister we come on special days, 
what they used to call them, uh, CMD Christmas, the one that come on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, you know? So, so we're not supposed to be uh, bad kind of way. <laughs> and we're not supposed to be that way. We, we need to, to come to, to the Lord's church, and we shouldn't be uh, hit and miss when we don't. And we, when we do that, we, we're sending a very strong message uh, to our children and, and to the people around. We're saying it's not important. You know, oftentimes, uh, friends or family members, they come to town to visit us, and instead of us coming to church, a lot of times we stay home to, to entertain them. That, that's not the way you should do. You know, you should bring them with you. Or, or leave them there if they don't want to come, you know? But you don't change your, 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 your situation and your routine you know, or whatever to, to accommodate them. And when you do that, 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 that says something very, very strong. It's almost like someone coming to, to live in your house, you know. And in your house, you, you got rules, you know. There are things that, that you uh, abide by. And, and we, we've not known people over the years that, that weren't married, but they, they, they lived together, and they probably lived together so long they, they probably forgot they ain't married, you know. But, uh, but, 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 in, but, but anyway, they kind of like the... Uh, the, the couple that came to the preacher and they asked the preacher for, for marriage counseling. And the preacher told them, y'all ain't even married. You know? <laughs> you know, sometimes people forget it. You know, people have been, been living together. So, but when people come to your house, you got your rules. You don't put them up in, in, in the same room, you know. You tell them, you know, I can't, y'all can't, you know, stay in the same room in my house. Y'all could uh, you stay in that room, you could stay in that room, or y'all go to the home hotel, you know. But, but you don't compromise. That you don't come, and when people see you behaving that kind of way, it, it sends a message. It, it sends a message. A lot of times we we will accommodate people, and we don't want to hurt their feelings, and we don't we don't do the right thing. We don't do the right thing, and, and that hurts our our, our influence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm working on
And then Exodus 21 through 6, you know, those, those are the uh, uh, Ten Commandments, and it talks about, you know, the fact that we, we don't put anybody ahead of God. We don't put anything ahead of God. We don't put any, anything ahead of God. And then the next point, the Christian must not be hypo, hip, hypocritical. Hypocritical, that's critical, not, not, not a hypocrite, but the hyper, hypercritical, hypercritical. What, what is being hypercritical? I'm so used to saying hypocritical. Hypercritical. What's, what's a hypercritical person? Like Paul, he was not. There were two, two forms of, of Pharisees, and he was under the name of like, what's on the, on the next page? They what's taught the letter of the law, and the other, the other Pharisees taught the spirit of the law. And that's why he Bottom of page 54. It's the second page on, on the right sheet. Over to the left, the second page over to the left. Number eight. Yeah. Number eight, you see it now? Just look. Yeah. Okay, all right, go ahead. Andrew. That's why he was so hypocritical and had Christians put to death because he's following the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law. Like I said, there was two. He was under the male, he was under the him, which they said in the letter of the law, where the other Pharisees modeled the spirit of the law. And it's two different things. And when you're hypocritical, you can. You become uh, the letter of the law. You come to be, you come to be very con condemning, very critical of everything. Look false, everything. You never see no good anywhere. You don't see the negative. You don't ever see the positive. Like God looks at us, and He sees us what we can be in Christ, not what we are. He sees the potential in our life. And so, when you become hypercritical, that's what Christians do that sometimes. And you leave the spirit of law and you start following the law and you become so hypercritical of everything, you can't run anybody to the Lord. How are you going to find somebody that's in another denomination, another faith? Because you're, you're going to denounce everything that they know of the Bible because they're not a member of the Lord's church. You can't do that. Faith comes by hearing, hearing about the Word of God, and that's what hypercritical people become in the Lord's church. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about non Christians. I'm talking about Okay. All right. The scripture is Matthew 7, 1 through 5. And it reads, Judge not that you do not judge. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eyes? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eyes, and, and look a plank is in your, your own eyes? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eyes, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your, your own eyes. So we're all familiar with, with, with that scripture about, about judging our others and always trying to see things in another people, and we're unable to see that big old beam that's in our, in our own eye. And we got to be, be careful of that. But the author was saying right here about uh, oftentimes in, in, in the church, uh, maybe you're trying to, to, to do something, and, and the, he said uh, on number eight, there was an individual who always found something wrong with every decision made. So on a certain occasion, he was asked to give his ideas upon a given suggestion which had been made. Whereupon he responded, no, that's, that's all right. You all go ahead and decide. Then I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Now, how much influence in the local church would such an individual have? The hypercritical fault finder is usually characterized as folly. He usually says nothing, does nothing. <laughs> Ordinarily, the man who is always finding fault seldom finds anything else. A fault finders usually are not fact <clears throat> and, and, and that's important sometimes. You know, when something, we're not talking about anything that goes against scripture. You know, we know that, that we should not be doing anything that goes against scripture. But, but we have, when it comes to doing certain things, how do we do certain things, uh, uh, I think that's what they're talking about. But oftentimes people will wait until something is put in place, until it's been discussed, and then they'll come later on and try to pick it apart. And, and then when you're trying to, you know, you have a meeting to try to, to organize something, and then they don't show up, but later on they, they try to pick, pull, pick things apart. That, that's a fault find. Mm -hmm. but, but we should never be doing anything that, that's, that's diabolically opposed to God's word. You know, this, maybe, maybe we decide that, that we're uh, going to knock on doors at, at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, you know, and we had a meeting and we talked about it, we planned it, 
And then all of a sudden, someone decided that, you know, they weren't important enough to come to the meeting. And then they said, well, maybe we should be doing this at, at 1 o'clock, you know. And, and just someone that just throws and finds faults with, with everything you do. And it's really funny, what's well, not really funny, but, mm -hmm. but Paul, being, being that under the, uh, the being the kind of guy the letter of the law type before he became a person, they had, God gave him 10 commandments and they turned it into six, 618. They had over 29 commandments that says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it whole. They had 29 rules that in order to observe the Sabbath day. Just they made up themselves. God says keep the Sabbath, keep it whole, and they come up 29 different commandments of keeping the Sabbath. So that's what happens when you get under that law type thing. And, you know, you got 608. I mean, I mean you can't even keep 10 commandments. Just think of your mind boggling 618. They had a lot for everything. I do want to point out that a lot of times when we become members of the body, mm -hmm. we think we've bought into being perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, for good or for bad, other Christians have influenced that thinking over time. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, we, have, we have perpetuated that belief that you become perfect when you become a member of the body of Christ. Right. And so when people become members of the body of Christ and the family, they think that's who they are supposed to be. And so they are quick to point out other people's imperfections in hopes of becoming more perfect themselves. Okay. And then you get caught up in that. I mean, you start to be, that becomes your, you know, that becomes your face, that becomes who you are. And then they don't realize it those times. Amen. And you can always find fault with it. People think yeah. God already knows that we're more than our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And they just, just forget about it. We don't realize that ourselves. And we're all a work in progress. We're all working in, 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 in progress. And especially a lot of times you got new babies in Christ, they, they come in and, and, and they're struggling with, with, with things. You know, I think about the two young men from, from the mission, you know. The young man, he's not uh, used to being a, a church person, you know. And, and there's a lot of, of things. We got to work with him and love him and, and show him, you know. But nobody comes in here perfect. Nobody comes in, 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 in here perfect. But that, that's important. We have, we have, we have to have patience with, with, with folk. We're yeah. a hospital. Um, Christ is the ultimate healer, but we're a hospital. And that's why Absolutely. he doesn't promise perfection, mm -hmm. he just promises healing. Amen. Amen. And some things are easily said than, than done, you know. It just ain't, it's not, 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 not that easy. We might just say, well, you know, we smoke cigarettes, you need to stop. You know, but uh, people, things are not so easily done, you know. And you got to be patient with people, and, and people got to be patient with, with, with themselves, you know? And they've got to, to stay in God's Word. Because we've all come a long ways. When, when, when Paul was talking about, you know, these fleshly things, and in the scripture he said, at, at one time, so, some of you were, were such, you know? And sometimes we forget about, you know, what, what, what the Lord has, has delivered us, uh, us from, how we want, once was. Paul wanted them to become arrogant, thinking mm -hmm. they were better. Amen. To those who were outside, he said, you came from the same thing. Amen. And the same way Jesus said, you know, he called the woman who committed adultery. Mm -hmm. You know, she said, even without sin, he go the first son. Amen. And what did they have to do? They, they, they all had to walk. They all had to head back. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful. We can, mm -hmm. you know, Amen. none of us are going to throw a stone. Amen. 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 Another, another mm -hmm. point for you, you to look at that um, perfection is not something you must get. Mm -hmm. It's something. It's constant striving for perfection and the, to the goal to set that goal in Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant strive, uh, striving for perfection in Christ. Amen. The general safety man. Because you are, you are failures. Mm -hmm. That's true. You are failures. So that's where that you are to set uh, focus mm -hmm. and God is yours. Amen. And then the next point, number nine, it says, the Christian must be full of faith, optimistic, and, and a visionary. Philippians uh, 4.13. Uh, yeah, we all know that scripture. What does Philippians 4.13 say? I can prove all things through Christ who strengthen me. And then the Christian should be full of op optimism. And a Christian that, that does not have an optimistic spirit or does not have a, a does not have a, a faith, does not have faith that, that things will change and things will get better. Uh, uh, he's not a very good, not, not, you know, he, he doesn't yield a whole lot of influence. And we should be, what, what's a visionary? 
somebody that, that look, look, look to the future, you know? Absolutely. You know, think things uh, right now, uh, uh, we're where we are, uh, but I believe that this is not going to be where, where we're going to always be, you know? You, you got to look beyond where, where, you are, where you are now. And you got to live by faith. We got to live by faith. My mom used to say, tell us, uh, uh, remember children, we are possibility people. We believe that with God, all things are possible. She used to always tell us that. We, 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 are, we are possibility people, you know. With God, all things are possible. You have faith and you do what you ought to do. Uh, you know, you, 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 you can do anything in life. And, and a Christian should, should have that, that kind of uh, faith. Yes, Mr. Lee. Amen. Amen. That's a good scripture. Amen. 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 That's the only thing the faith is a work, something we got to work at. It's mm -hmm. not just, I agree with all of us to get the faith, a certain measure of faith. Mm -hmm. We have to work at it. Yeah. Work faith, it for a while. faith without works is mm -hmm. dead, you know. Show me your faith, God. Then it's going to change your life if you don't work it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, so have, have faith. Even when it comes to soul winning, have, have faith, you know. Have, have faith. Things might take longer than, than you might want it to take. But you got you got to have faith. We had two baptisms last towards the last Thursday. It was last, last Thursday, we had two baptisms. You know, the, the month before that, we had uh, four gentlemen from the mission uh, was baptized. You know, well, we got to have, have faith. You know, and I've been preaching at that mission for, for two years. You know, but uh, you know you can't give up faith. You can't say, uh, well, you know that that's a waste of our time, a waste of our money. You got to have faith. You got to keep on keeping on. You know, even, even uh, the farmer, the first scripture in the Bible it says, if you consider the weather, you won't plan. You know, <laughs> a farmer won't plan. A farmer thinks about, you know, you, you can't think about what, what present conditions are. You got to go out and, and you got to you got to be repetitious with it. You got to okay. plant. You, you planted the seed and you mm -hmm. watered it mm -hmm. by continuously nurturing the farm. And they got what? And the church. church. Yeah, who gives the increase? Do I give the increase? Do you give the increase? God, God gives the increase. We sow the seed and water. That's mm -hmm. it. So, so we we've got to be optimistic. We got to be optimistic. We got to have faith in, in, in the things that, that we're doing. They're in accordance with God's word. And then finally, the Christian must must be friendly. I think it's Proverbs say, in order to have friends, you got to show yourself friendly. You got to be a friendly person. You can't be a mean. You know, I mean, some people are just mean. Some people are really not kind, or they're not very nice, they're not, some people have bad manners, and a Christian really shouldn't be that way. A Christian really shouldn't have bad, bad manners, you know. All the time people come and visit us, we should greet them, we, we should smile, we should shake their hand. Now, Brother Andrew, he, he does that very, very well, you know. Every time somebody uh, comes in, Andrew would make it a point to, to, to introduce himself and make him feel, feel good, you know. A lot of folks have said that this is a, a friendly church. But, but being friendly is, is very, very important. And not to be phony either, you know. Now there's some people that got a nice fake smile. And you can tell that, that it's a fake smile, you know. But, but there are people we should be genuine and we should really care about people. It shouldn't be fake and it shouldn't be, be, be phony. And, and it shouldn't be, be, be played, and, you know. We, we need to really be, be friendly people, really, really concerned about people. Because it's very, very, very important. Because Jesus was, was a people person. Jesus, uh, all the time when people were trying to get, get Jesus, his disciples said, well, send them away, send them away, you know. But, he, you know, little children, he loved children, he loved, he didn't care what, what kind of situation a person was in, what kind of illness, he, he, would, he would touch them and he would, you know, and he would connect with them. So we, we ought to be friendly people. Christians should be friendly people. Re Christians really shouldn't just be mean mean, inconsiderate people. Even your neighborhood, your neighbor should say that you're a friendly person. You shouldn't be one of those people that don't want anybody to, to walk on your grass and, and all that kind of stuff. I've seen people like that. A kid throw a ball on the grass and they just go nuts. You know, little, little things like that. We, we don't, you know, somebody walking their dog and he uses the bathroom on, on your yard. You know, you just go crazy. You know? I remember when I was a kid, this guy had this lawn, right? And this really nice lawn. The kids would run off over the corner with their bike. You know this guy did? He'd come up with bomb water and the cement and stuff. The kid would have fallen in and finally killed him. He was 
dear friend of mine, Dina, this guy, and his uh, wife, Rita. Rita was one of my translators for, for years in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, they had a child, um, they were Christian, they, they had a child from a Christian family. Um, they had a child just a few weeks ago, 